welcome along my name is eddie and this is my vlog and today is july the 10th we've uh, we've changed the wheels over on our one uh 11090 here and uh on the back as you might see in the rear view mirror or if i turn around you can see we have a uh, spray out full of herbicide uh, that is because uh, we have several fields that are plagued by weeds at the moment. Uh, we've got quite a late spray on the canola. The canola is about three, four weeks out from uh, harvest. Um, but uh, that has a fair amount in it. The carrots have a fair amount in them. Uh, the soybeans need doing. Uh, I'm trying to think where else we've got that needs that needs doing. But we've got, we've got several places where... Um, we have a, uh, a problem with the weeds. Uh, you can see our grass here that we cut last time. That is now drying rather nicely. Uh, I think we're still probably a week or so from being able to, uh, to actually get this rowed up and collected. But, and baled, sorry, because we're, we're after the uh, hay. But... Uh, yeah, we've got a fair amount to do on the farm in between. So there are quite a few weeds in this field, if I recall. I can't see them at the moment. It's quite difficult to see at this level. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got quite a few weeds in the canola there. So we are going to get that sprayed first. Uh, as I said, it is quite late in the, uh, the growth of the canola uh, to be getting rid of weeds. But... And they are here, and they will, reflect, uh, will affect our yield if we don't. So I can't really uh, ignore that. Let's jump in. Yeah, there we go. Uh, thankfully, this is uh, this is not so far grown that this is uh, driving through. It's going to knock any of the seed out. We're, as I said, we're still several weeks from having... Oh, I've not connected up my PTO. There we go. There we are. So we should be okay with this. Um, doing this spraying now. It's rather a... Uh, uh, as I said, a late spray. But, oh yeah, you can see further into the field. We have got a fair few weeds in here. So we'll get this field sprayed and get this done. We're then going to go and attack the carrots and get them sprayed as well. We are at the, uh, you can see we're, we're fairly late as well because we can only just hold the sprayer above the crop, um, which is uh, which is never a good sign because it means our crop is pretty high and, uh, and getting very close to being harvestable. But uh, this will all work fine. And uh, and we'll just get rid of uh, we'll get rid of the gump from uh, from when we harvest. It makes things easier when we uh, not having the contamination of the weeds when we go to uh, sell this canola will uh, will work out much better for us. Uh, it means we'll get a higher price for our canola and a better yield. So uh, yeah, this uh, this does need doing, even though our weeds are not that visible. They are in here and need getting rid of. One of the reasons I'm looking at the next field over, I think we covered this when we seeded this field, is that we've got a gateway down here that goes into uh, that lower field there, um, which means that this field is connected to the farm, much as, uh, as, as a lot of this farm is interconnected um, due to, to its previous part uh previously being part of the valley rock estate uh it would be uh as i said many times i really really want to do something about getting uh as much of this estate restored to its former glory as possible i mean we have a large chunk of it here uh make no mistake we have a we have a large area of the estate uh, and uh, a very central part of it. Uh, Hilltop Farm really was uh, the centre of this when it was uh, uh, when it was a much bigger estate. Uh, but the breakup uh, into much more manageable and sellable chunks, of course, uh, made the difference there. 
All right, I'm going to go in and start getting myself uh, across the field. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's one of those things where we have access to field. There is the access points to fields from this main hub, this main heart of the farm, uh, onto fields that we don't own at the moment. And I want to sort of, I want to buy those and make sure that those are brought back into the main uh, body of the farm. Right, I want to come round. And on again. I think going forwards, um, having been spoilt now by our new tractor, the uh, missing a GPS on the uh, on a spraying tractor like this is is quite annoying. I have thought about possibly getting this tractor retrofitted with it. Um, I don't know how well it would work with uh, with uh, a piece of equipment this old, um, especially as you know there's there's no computer controls on this at all. Uh, I have heard that you can retrofit tractors like this uh, with that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, I've heard that it's a pain because you do need to make well you obviously need to make some mechanical alterations uh, in order for uh, the GPS to control the steering and things like that and this is this is a very rudimentary power steering in this um, there's nothing uh, yeah it's uh, it's there's nothing as I said before nothing computer controlled about this at all it is just uh, a very sort of hands-on, um, very mechanical setup on here. One of the great things about this tractor, though, is that it is very easy to maintain. I mean, with no electro, well, with no computer, uh, computerized bits or computer control bits, I know that I can take this into my workshop, uh, pull it apart, put it back together, and have no issues. Uh, and easily maintain it uh, the um, having it uh, having something like GPS integrated into it would cause a lot of issues would make it very very difficult for me to uh, to do that kind of thing I would uh, yeah I wouldn't be able to go and uh, and and do any of that kind of control so um yeah it's it's one of those things where uh modern technology is great until it breaks and then you are and then you start to to cost money because you can no longer do it yourself uh that is that mind you that is the way of modern farming to be honest but it's uh yeah gone are the days where you could uh just uh take your tractor into your workshop if you had a problem uh, get it fixed and then go back to the dealer if you really needed to um where it would then cost you a fortune to uh, to fix whatever um thing had broken or uh, or even your your mum and uh, mum and pop uh, as they'd say in the states um uh, garages and and agricultural uh uh, machinery specialists you know you need you, these days you need to buy a whole load of computerized gadgetry just to uh, just to diagnose the problem uh, whereas they used to just bring a tractor in uh, they could diagnose it very easily because most engines run in the same way and uh, and you know Bob's your uncle there you go you've got a, uh, a nicely repaired tractor uh, at a, a fraction of the cost that it would uh, would be to uh, to take it into the full dealership. So it's uh, yeah, times are a changing. Uh, in some ways, yeah, in conclusion, times are a changing. In some ways they're better, in some ways they're not. Uh, and that, uh, mind you, change that is life. So um, you know, you either embrace it or you fear it. Uh, I do both. I've been close to the end of this uh, field now, and the um, I, I, this sprayer is really good. Part of the reason why we have such a, a big tank sprayer on here uh, is because it makes it easier to come out, do a job like this, and not have to go back to the yard. Anything that saves me time like that 
uh, on the farm is is a good thing. It's something that I can uh, I can get behind and is uh, is useful to me. Uh, you can actually get the largest version of this, the the largest boom that you can get on this sprayer is something uh somewhere around twice the width uh, which on this farm would be utterly ridiculous but it gives you an idea of uh of of how big some of the farms that use a sprayer like this are uh and it just uh for our purposes it is absolutely perfect completely spot on uh, very much allows me to uh, to get round the farm uh, with the with this smallest spray reach, uh, do the fields efficiently and uh, and 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 not have to constantly refill, uh, which is good. Um, turn it off. Uh, whereas uh, you know a, a bigger farm uh, that's that's going to need the wider reach, they'll probably only get a. Uh, with the, with a, a field that would require such a wide reach probably only gonna get uh a single tank from this onto a field um and that's uh you know that's that's good that's that makes this a very versatile piece of equipment uh for lots and lots of people right i think that covers us so we'll see if we can get it to fold in yeah there we go the other thing is that uh it doesn't drop the arms when you go to uh to fold it in so i'm able to fold it in above the crop and not cause any issues but we'll head out now and go and get the carrots done as well we've got soybeans to do as well but i'll probably get onto those in the next couple of days I don't know. If we have time today, I might go and do them. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll try and keep roughly in the same... Try and keep a, a width here so that we're not damaging any crop. And head out and into our next field over here, which is our carrots. And, uh, and here, it's much more visible, the weeds and our weed problem. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be similarly visible on the uh, soybeans. I don't think the soybeans are quite as high grown as our others. So let's turn this on. And uh, and we'll get the herbicide onto this field as well. Do our headlands first, but you can see immediately we have an effect on our weeds. Uh, which is great. That's going to improve the yield of this carrots no end. All going very nicely and very smoothly here on this field. Uh, it's much easier for us to see than we had on the uh, canola. I knew that the weeds were there on the canola, but I couldn't see exactly where they are here. Uh, we've got a much better visibility of the weed problem. Uh, and we much easier for us to line up as well. Uh, again, GPS not being a part of this tractor uh, we're able to uh, to get a good feel for our wits and we can see we're doing not too bad actually uh, not got much overlap which is good I don't want to put too much herbicide on one spot but the carrots are uh, these carrots are looking pretty healthy to be honest we've got a, a, a good uh, a good view of them uh, for uh, going forwards. And as I said, they're going to be a good cash crop for us. Carrots tend to sell fairly well. Uh, they're somewhere... Their yield is very similar to that of... Um, uh, to that of sugar beet. But uh, they tend to sell for higher. Uh, which is good news. Very good. Oh my, wow, so many weeds in this field. That's that's pretty bad. I just hoping. Uh, oh, am I wide enough for that crop? Uh, that set of weeds over there. I think we've got them. No, we haven't. I think we've come in too far. I oh, know we're okay. We're okay. We've got them. We haven't got an overlap. It's all good. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's difficult to see these things. And uh, 
you know, you want to make sure you're getting the best coverage, the best value for money, because doing a massive overlap on your uh, uh, on your herbicide means that you're uh, you're wasting money and you're putting uh, an excess uh, amount of chemicals on the crop, both of which are not good. So we try and avoid both of those things because if we can uh, then we tend to end up with a, a much better crop uh, and a much more profitable crop at the end of it so, so i try when i'm turning to keep an eye on the uh right hand or the inner uh, inner part of the boom try and make sure that we are able to uh, to see the spot around which that turns if i can do that that lines me up pretty well for the next row. Um, the trick, though, is to turn early enough that I'm not putting the boom into the hedgerow. Uh, otherwise, that can cause problems. And you can see we need to be fairly exact on the next row as we missed, just missed those weeds there. So as we get towards the point, we turn it off. We turn it. We keep an eye roughly for there. We know roughly where we want to be this time and bring it round and turn it on again and away we go and that now should if we if we've got that turn right we should just cover those two edge ones without going any further and i don't know if i've got it right you know i think i have i think we've got again there we go minimal overlap we've covered the ones that we wanted to perfect i am very very pleased with that right and there we go turn it off get it round and i think we've got one more row to go uh no noticeable weeds here but we need to treat it to prevent any growing um because yeah it's gonna be i reckon we're probably gonna get to these carrots sometime in uh september ish should be uh should be around about when so uh yeah i think we've got a we've got a while to go on them yet I'll turn that off and fold that in that has got this field weed free so we've got one more field to do today uh we need to go and clear them out of uh our field of soybeans up on field 18 so we'll head up there now um i'll close this gate behind me simply because if the cows do get out we want to limit their um the amount of space they can roam in so we close these gates closing farm gates is always a good idea uh, it just means that if uh, if the cows do get out it it makes it harder for them to get further uh, and uh, and makes them easier to round up having said that i did leave these gates open at the top here right i'll just pull out of here and there we go close this one there we are and close this one absolutely limit how far our cows can get and then head down and head around this way oh, looking through that hedge there and i oh yeah look at that that is a very very good uh field of wheat that we've got in there we should get we should get a nice field of wheat a nice nice field of oats uh, and a nice field of canola all in about the next uh well end end of this month beginning of next month uh, i'm expecting on uh it's, it's looking like they're gonna come right late july early august which is great and that is exactly where i want to be harvesting them uh weather is actually looking pretty decent uh in the uh lung uh ooh. yeah there we go there's our field of oats those are looking pretty good as well. Oh, over. Yeah, looking very nice. These these have no weeds in. We dealt with the uh, 
the weeds in the wheat and the uh, oats a little while ago, you might remember. Uh, this is our field of soybeans. And yeah, you can see in here, soybeans are growing rather nicely, but so are the weeds. So uh, one more field to do. I think we've got enough in our... Uh, oh, we can see that from that. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Let's unfold this. Should be enough herbicide in here to handle this. And start it up. There we go. And, uh, and get this field done as well now. And, uh, and yeah, have some good soybeans to... Which, uh, which will help, you know, we, we're looking at making a handsome, uh, handsome amount of money on here this year. One of the great things about this sprayer is just how maneuverable it is. Uh, it's got rear turning wheels on it. So what you get is in the corner, your, your turning circle is actually more around uh, the, the pivot of your connection to the tractor uh, than it is uh, the actual trailer or the actual um sprayer uh, so you get a you get a much much sharper turn from this and more which means it's more maneuverable and uh, and more easy to get around the corners and get into the corners as well uh and, and a sprayer that you can get into the corners on the field without having to do lots of uh maneuvering is always a good thing uh helps uh massively with uh, with making sure that we've got the best coverage we can now i want to be over here i think yeah and we'll line up in the rows a little bit of overlap at the start um but that's mainly so that we can get ourselves lined up very nicely with the rows of uh of the soybeans here uh, means that we're taking these out uh, or taking these weeds out much more cleanly and are able to line ourselves up better again without the gps anything anything that gives us a good line that we can uh, that we can do the field at uh, is a good thing so uh yeah i'm always looking at that uh we want to turn about here ish i think yeah so off turn round turn and in and that is all good make sure we've got a nice steady speed that we're going down the field at and uh, and yeah just uh, sort of whack these weeds as quickly as we can uh, to uh, to do the best um, best we can at getting rid of them and getting the best yield out We've got one other field of soybeans on the farm down by the uh, down by the sheep farm. Uh, so we we because this this field is not as as you can probably see this field is not as big as the other two fields we've been doing today, and uh, and so we put another field of soybeans down there because we had a field uh, that was available. Uh, now what those are were planted much later than this field and we're not going to be spraying those today they do have a, a little bit of weed in them but uh, i'm going to wait till they get more to this sort of height before worrying about that too much um but uh, i think we're going to end up with a very late soybean harvest as a result on the farm this year uh, it's uh it should hopefully be fine um i'm always worried about uh rain late in the year uh especially late in the harvest season what we want is uh a little bit of rain between now and uh and harvest itself uh just to give these crops that last little boost and uh and not to dry them out too much but uh and this is the big but um we we tend to get it later in the year Uh, we tend to get it later in the year and as a result uh we are um 
and we're, we're at risk of losing a crop of soybeans so uh we'll see how we go uh it does happen uh you 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 try and get everything in but i know i know of many farms that uh, they get washed out late harvest especially if you're trying to get stuff in way too late in your harvest um i don't want to be i, I my worry is at the moment that we could be harvesting uh soybeans in october and uh, and i don't yeah i don't really want to be doing that so uh we'll we'll see how it goes and god forbid we've still got the combine out in november that would be that would be really bad um uh, but we'll uh, we'll see how we go. We want to be doing the uh, carrots at that point, really. Uh, October, no, late late October, um, early November is uh, is when I really aim to do carrots. Um, but that's got this field done, and uh, that's got that field done. Sorry, we're well out of the field now um, and dusted. And we want to get this back down to our sheep farm um because uh yeah we are all sprayed i can show you actually on the way back uh this other field of soybeans we've got uh, we've got a few uh weeds in our clover field as well i noticed but i'm not expecting to that that to regrow too quickly we need to put some fertilizer on that uh and by that i probably mean some slurry so uh yeah we'll uh we'll see if we can get that done in the next uh couple of weeks but now though uh oh yeah this is this is where we want to get this what i do want to have a look at nothing coming along the road is this so you can see this is our other field of soybeans planted really late we've got a few patches of weeds uh that you can see but not many uh and this yeah this i'm uh, i'm concerned about as to whether we will uh, be able to harvest those but we'll see. It was a little bit of a, we've got a spare field. Uh, we can do it. Uh, I'm tempted to put that field down to clover next year. Because I think a second field of clover on the farm uh, would be really useful to us. Uh, and down here is, is pretty much uh, where we've got all of that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, we need to get this washed down because, of course, it's uh, it's had a load of herbicide on it, uh, and we've got our. Oh, we actually need to wash the G nine one ninety down as well. Um, but uh, yeah, that is uh, that is where I'm going to leave uh, this today. Actually, you can see here those rear turned wheels. That is so manoeuvrable that sprayer. Anyway, uh, that's where I'm going to leave this vlog. So all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching i hope you have enjoyed this vlog please give it a like drop us a comment and give it a share and for all the latest videos from the farm please subscribe to the channel ring that bell and i will see you next time goodbye